All right, so um, Anne, I will let you continue to admit everyone and I will get started now with our annual event. So thank you everyone for coming tonight. It's uh, very special to have you here. Um, oh, can everybody hear me okay? Make sure to mute yourself uh, during the event. Uh, only speakers will have their, their microphones on. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Um, and again, for those who just joined, the event is recorded. So if you don't wanna be on the recording, um, please turn off your cameras and we will post the recording and share it uh, via email and it will be on our website. So the agenda for tonight, uh, we have some wonderful speakers here tonight, uh, both past interns and some of our staff or former staff that will share all types of tips and tricks uh, for uh, your future internships. And then I will be presenting a bit more about our office and what we do. Um, so stick around if you want to know more about that and all the resources that uh, we have accessible for you. And at the end, uh, if you also want, if you listen to the speakers, you feel so inspired and you want to talk to them and ask them some questions, make sure to stick around at the end. So we have some breakout rooms uh, so you can network with the, the speakers, add them on LinkedIn, ask them any questions. Um, we always encourage students to really connect with each other through the internship search because that's really the best way to um, to find your perfect opportunity. So let's get started. Um, I have a few a very quick presentation of our uh, services before our speakers start. Uh, for those who have never heard about the AIO uh, before, I, we're doing a little AIO 101, our syllabus. So what we do is internship opportunities, funding opportunities, and training opportunities. So again, we'll go into more details about what that looks like. Um, but it's good to keep in mind uh, those few things as we go through the, the presentation. And all of this is possible thanks to very generous donors. So in summer 22, we had 105 faculty of art students uh, who received over $580,000 as recipients of the 22 Faculty of Arts Internship Awards, as well as 38 students who received 190,000 as recipients of the Faculty of Arts Undergraduate Research Internship Awards that we usually called ARIA. Um, so congratulations to all of you past interns who are here with us tonight. Um, that will be there as well, uh, even people who are not speakers, but that, that came here tonight to also answer any questions. Um, again, about internships and funding and training and all the package that comes with our office. So part also of our uh, training course, some buzzwords that we use um, as we're training new staff, we also realize that we have a whole language in our office. So you'll get to know words like postings, awards, ARIA, AMI, drop-in. So again, stick around to get to know uh, what all those words mean and how they can be fruitful to you and your internship search. All right, so let's get started with our speakers. Uh, our first speaker is uh, my dear friend Antoine, uh, who used to be my boss and uh, is now the Black Student Affairs Liaison, and I had now took his job. So <laughs> uh, the floor is to you, Antoine. I will turn off the PowerPoint and there you go. Yeah, hi everyone, and thanks uh, for having me join you today. It's good to see everyone back in the office or the virtual one. So. As you mentioned, my name is Antoine and I'm the Black Student Affairs Liaison and the equity team under the Office of the Provost. But you're right, I was once in your very seat, Jade, uh, working in the Arts Internship Office, but I was also once in the seat preparing my own speech for this incredible annual celebration. Um, I was lucky enough to then work with Jade and Anne and the team in supporting art students in their internship endeavors as the AIO coordinator for many years before starting my new position. And for me, it's the importance of internships as a model to help students learn beyond the classroom and contribute to the community in a meaningful way. It's something I've always kept with me. And that's why I was really happy and proud to be able to use some of the provostial funding under McGill's University's ABR Action Plan to support the Faculty of Arts Action Plan to address anti-Black racism fund. So you're gonna hear from some of the students that uh, benefited from this fund. And what I love about internships is that the whole process from learning about them to applying, receiving the training and completing them, and then sharing your experience it really helps expand student interns and the host organization's horizons and helps them reach their objectives. So academically and professionally, I've seen students really gain invaluable experience. And I've also seen organizations be able to continue working with or recruit new summer interns. And professors also through ARIA uh, be able to expand their research 
and have students be inspired to become researchers and professors themselves. So it's through the generosity of donors, the incredible thorough support from the AIO team and the supervising professors and your own special skills and dedication that I hope that you'll be able to live something very important like uh, the experiential learning you get from completing an internship. And I just wanted to leave you with a post that I saw yesterday that really inspired me on Instagram. This post is from Abdel Diko. They just graduated with a master's degree in global governance and diplomacy from Oxford University. They were like throwing their hat in the air on Instagram, so I gave some fire emojis there. But I actually met Abdel um, as an art student when he became an intern for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the UNHCR, through the support of the Alan Hodgson Arts Internship Award. So this was just a student interested in internships. They were asking me questions, went to this event, went to some info sessions, started applying. And what they mentioned was applying to this program and getting the internship, then applying to something else, then applying to the Rhodes Scholar and in so becoming the first black student from McGill University to successfully become a Rhodes Scholar. And now with the world at, uh, at their fingertips graduating successfully, it made me think about how important these opportunities are and how accessible they are. So I really hope that you get inspired from the students you'll hear from tonight, that you don't hesitate to go see the team, book an appointment, ask a question. I'll leave a link in the chat about Abdel's story. And I wanna thank everyone for being here and encourage everyone to participate in the AIO's wonderful programs. So thanks for having me. Thank you, Antoine. Um, so our next speaker will be uh, Maxine Serio, who uh, did an internship in, uh, who, sorry, who studies political science and history and did uh, their last internship at the UNHCR. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. So my name is Maxine, and I just recently graduated uh, from a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and History. And so this summer, I did an internship with the UNHCR in Montreal. And then I also did an internship with Equitas the summer before that. And all these internships were through the Arts Internship Office. Um, having an internship with the UNHCR this summer was incredible. You know, I can 15 year old me can't even, couldn't even imagine ever having an internship at the UN. And then I did, and it was very incredible. I felt extremely lucky. Um, but one thing you don't know is that I applied in 2021 for the UNHCR internship and I didn't even make it to the first stage of the application. And then I reapplied the year after when I then finally uh, got the position. And this even also applies for my Acritas internship. I applied and then I had a first interview. I failed completely the interview. And then they contacted me again for a second interview for a different uh, position. And then that's where I kind of knew more the expectation of the interview, I knew how I could do better for the second interview. So then I got the position and I started with a four months uh, contract uh, as an intern. And then they renewed my contract for a year. So I ended up doing part-time while finishing school. And then this fall, they offered me my first full-time job with private insurance and vacation and all of that first job <laughs> that I started two weeks ago. So I just wanted to share those stories because I remember when I was applying for internship, how stressful and how much pressure I had to secure that dream internship and to be and to feel like if I didn't have that dream internship, I would never go anywhere in my career. And I just want to reassure you all that that's not the case. And this is all going to be a learning opportunity uh, for you to like do interviews, write a cover letter, write a CV. So take down that pressure a little bit and just take it as a practice run uh, for all of that. But what I would advise you to do is really go to all the info session that the arts internship office is gonna have like today, keep going to them like all semester. Uh, also book an appointment with CAPS so that they can review your CV, they can review your cover letter. Also have a friend uh, review your cover letter. I think what was hard for me is was really articulating my personality in writing. I was having a hard time and I was always writing what I thought people wanted to hear rather than why I really wanted to do an internship. And most importantly, reach out to past interns. They're really going to help you share tips and how to be successful and really know the expectations, because that's my biggest tip. The more you'll know the expectations for a CV, a cover letter, an interview, the better you can be successful at it. Um, and so 
one of my other advice is that I really lacked with interviews. And so I really had to practice. If this is, if you feel like in the application process, you lack in something, practice. Like I, at first I was like, it's so easy to do an interview. You just improvise. And then that's when I realized it's not easy. You need to practice and you actually need to practice with someone in front of you. And the more you practice, the better you'll be just prepared. So if anything, reach out to past interns so you can know the expectation and then hopefully be uh, successful in your application process. So this is the moment where the dogs bark in the background, uh, but our next speaker will be Sadhvi Balaji, uh, who did an internship with the Betsy Elizabeth Trust, and I would leave the floor to Sadhvi. I just have to change my pin. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, so now my name is Sadhvi, and I interned with Bet or Betsy Elizabeth Trust. So that's a partner of Help Kids India, who's the fundraising partner. And so it's basically a Tamil grassroots organization that comprises of several preschool creches and they all promote inclusivity, nutrition, and generally educational outcomes. So I had to know Tamil to like go in and collect primary source data, conduct interviews and um, get focus group data within the preschool communities. So that really helped me gain insights into how these preschools are contributing to long-term educational development. And so this summer I really got to go in and I, I wanted to film content. So I was able to create videos about the preschool staff community, also generally volunteered um, within the preschool um, and created some educational aids. And I was also able to paint them a mural in front of their school. So I was able to use my artistic abilities and just generally conduct on-site economic graphic field work for uh, future research. And so I found this re, uh, internship through my previous, um, through a previous AIO student advisor, and she's also a friend of mine. Her name's Kavya Mohan. And so she felt that because of my previous international development experience and like my language skills, that I would qualify despite the deadline for this internship if I already had passed. And so this basically shows that even if you, even if the deadline's passed, you should still take that chance and pursue something you are really passionate about and you know you would qualify for, even if the circumstances aren't on your side. So, you know, developing a large network of people can point you to these opportunities. And one more thing I want to emphasize is also your cover letter. So it should be one of your strongest points because I made mine very targeted. I showcased that I had the Tamil skills and my professional experience is also relevant to this internship. So making it very targeted to show you can stand out even if the deadline passed is really key. And finally, just um, these opportunities, you need to communicate also that you have other skills as well. So I was I communicated that I had like filmography skills and I also have a lot of artistic skills so that I was able to use that within my internship and communicated that with my internship supervisor to create more of a multidisciplinary experience and I could further develop those skills. Um, so yeah, and I've also applied for academic credit to, for this internship. And so I feel like this would last me long-term professional and personal growth. And I was also able to make a lot of family connections that would last me a lifetime in this internship. So I'm really thankful for that and my donor. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and now our next speaker is our ARIA uh, internship participant, uh, Nunez. Yeah, thank you, Jade. Um, so I really love what Maxine and Saudi said before, like, please don't be afraid to try, guys, and try and try again. Um, and like what Saudi said, it's really important to like be so, uh, specific about your cover letter, but I will offer you a different perspective. So I did my area, which is a research award, and I did my uh, Dr. Signe Shannon's uh, memory lab in the Department of Psychology. So for my project, we looked at how like having different goals to remember something can change the content of personal events. Um, but with area in general, I thought that it was really awesome to help me practice that elusive work-life balance that everyone's talking about. Um, I think that's because like you have a limited hours of 
how much time you can work on your area per week. So that really helped me prioritize, okay, like which tasks I need to do during the work hours, which tasks I can batch together, like responding emails, just do it um, only during certain time in the day so that it saves you some time. Um, and some of the highlights would probably to uh, be able to see all the area recipients at uh, social events. So it was really nice to see like um, their faces and hear about the challenges and the wins that they have in their experiences. Um, and some of the tips that I have, which we can also talk about later, is that uh, to start early. So make your profs know that you're applying to a summer research award so that they have a project ready for you. And Last year, the deadline was in late February. So I reached out to my professors around December and January, just let them know that, hey, like I'm doing this. So please, uh, if you have any projects, I would love to work on it. Um, and in terms of proposal writing, it's kind of different from applying to a, an internship because um, you have different research expertise and you actually don't know um, like the expertise of the evaluating community. So I would suggest to make your proposal as simple, as concise, and as like in lay language as possible, uh, because you don't want your readers to like look up every single jargon or look up every single term that you uh, are talking about. So try to make it very understandable and uh, also, like remember to use your resources. The AIO is a great place to start, and you're coming to this um, info session, so you're doing something right. Um, and yeah, so next year, if you get into your area or uh, other internships, congratulations. But if you don't, it's okay. So the results will probably be out in March or February. So you still have some time to um, focus on other things if you want to do other things in the summer, like trying a different uh, volunteer position, traveling, or taking on a different job. So it's not the end. You can still have other options. And yeah, happy to chat with you guys later. Thank you so, so much. Um, really great advice from everyone. And now our next speaker from the Faculty of English is Emma. Hi everyone, I'm Emma. I'm in third year and I'm studying English Cultural Studies and I'm minoring in art history. Um, this summer I worked with a nonprofit in Montreal called ARCH. ARCH sources funding for emerging Quebec artists and gives them professional training in order to prepare for their annual art exhibition in September. Um, the exhibition just ended, it was in Square Dorchester downtown and it was awesome. In addition, ARCH curates various exhibitions with partnering galleries in Montreal throughout the year. So I sourced this internship through ETE Canada, which is also known as Canada Summer Jobs. Um, and it's an online job database for young adults looking to work in professional fields of their choosing. Not only does ETE Canada help job seekers connect with employers, the program also gives grants to employers to finance employees. So this gave my organization a lot more freedom in terms of scheduled hours, budget and training for me. Through my time with ARCH, I was given insights into the professional art world and especially gained experience that was applicable to both my English major through copy editing, translation and communications and my art history minor with curation, exhibition programming and project management. ARCH is also founded and staffed by all women, which made for a very unique work environment where I felt well supported by my employees, both emotionally and professionally. My boss at my organization was formerly an intern at ARCH through the AIO, um, and she recently graduated from McGill with a degree in art history. Um, she's now the project manager, which shows that not only do internships through McGill give great experience, but build strong connections between students and employers in their preferred fields. Some tips I would give to those seeking credit for their internship is make sure you're prepared before the beginning of your employment. Um, I made the mistake of not reading the fine print and was put in a situation where I had to hurriedly and retroactively apply for credits, which was graciously managed by the AIO. Um, so now alongside my supervisor, Professor Alana Thane, 
I'm working on a research project that's going to demonstrate my practical learnings from my time at Arch and apply theoretical aspects from both cultural studies and art history in the form of creative project. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Emma. Uh, our next speaker was an intern at Sinarcos, uh, too. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, can you, we all hear me? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a student from uh, political science and psychology. Uh, I was lucky enough to receive the Shou Yang International Experience Award. And so that made it possible for me to intern at Sinarcos. So Sinarcos is an international and nonprofit um, organizations that works on international issues such as poverty, uh, environmental issue, et cetera. And uh, my position was an intern uh, in the human resource department. Um, and I've, uh, I think the experience has given me a lot of like professional experience. Like I was working with like adults and I would have to like be disciplined about myself and I would have to reply to emails on time and can't procrastinate anymore. So I think it's a, it's a very good way to start to get to know yourself in a bit more disciplined environment. And at the same time, it's also interesting to see like how an international organization functions in terms of like how they divide their manpower, how they use their fund. So it's a, it, it's a very enhancing experience for me. Um, my tips for internships is probably start as early as you can. You would think that, oh, uh, I can start at the beginning of, at the beginning of winter. You can start now, like start to look into funds now. Start because like you wouldn't know when they open the application. So it's good to keep several things in mind and note them down. And when it's the time you just open it up to see if it's open or not, and you just apply so that you can make sure that you have it in control. Uh, the second thing is that uh, I think like, again, use all the resources. Everyone's been talking about the resources. I think McGill has a lot of resources to offer. The AO is a great place to seek help from. So go for it. And also like, I think it's, it's also important to, because like sometimes we, we always see like, oh, uh, what do you want to do? But at the same time, we, we're, sometimes we're not sure about what we want to do. So open yourself to experience because like sometimes internships won't be as you expected, but they will still be a learning experience. And I think it's an important spirit to keep because it, it will help you adapt to like different environments. Yeah, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so our next, next speaker is uh, Dunya who interned at uh, the UNHCR Guatemala. Uh, so hi everyone, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience and hopefully it will be useful uh, to some of you. So I'm a fourth year student and I'm completing an honors degree in political science. Uh, last summer I interned with UNHCR Guatemala um, <clears throat> in the protection field unit of a city that's called Izabal. Um, so just to give you a bit of context, uh, UNHCR's primary goal is to provide um, international protection to refugees, ensure their well-being, and safeguard, uh, safeguard their rights. Um, and so in the branch that I was part of, which is Guatemala, um, we deal with refugeehood and forced displacement in Central America specifically. So as a protection intern, um, I conducted research on asylum processes for Guatemalans uh, at risk in those regions. Uh, so Isabel and Alta Verapaz, uh, and who would be eligible for a settlement. Um, uh, I often conducted a lot of media monitoring um, of information related to persons of concern and interest to the UNHCR. Um, I also had a lot of mandatory training to complete that comes with UNHCR in general, uh, but they're really a uh, um, it made me feel like very more, much more knowledgeable uh, about the themes that we were dealing with. So I'd say um, there were some really special moments during the internship. One of the highlights was uh, attending a meeting that was given by the high commissioner himself uh, for UNHCR interns uh, and be able to ask him a question. And also the team that I was working with, they were really devoted and they loved what they were doing. So that made us I, so uh, the other intern and I 
want to like really contribute to uh, the team uh, and the projects they're working on. Um, an advice that I would say is that um, once you've like found the like found the internship, um, it's really to spend a lot of time on your CV and personal statement. Has you guys have also said before, uh, it's really time consuming, but it can like show that you've done your research. Um, when I applied, I mentioned uh, for for Guatemala, I mentioned that uh, the journey of hundreds of migrants from Honduras crossing into Guatemala, which has happened like just a few days before the deadline. So like you can show that you're really interested and that you, you really want to commit to that specific internship um, and prepare as much as you can for the interview uh, through like the AIO workshops or just prepare like potential answers to like hypothetical questions. And especially I would say uh, the behavioral ones because I find them really hard personally. Um, and that was four out of five questions during my interview. I thought it would be like one or two. It was actually like uh, the majority of questions. So like I had to come up with like answers uh, on the spot, which is really hard sometimes. Um, and just finally, I think the biggest advice would be to also prepare fewer applications, but make sure they're qualitative. So instead of sending out tons of like Indeed applications uh, that can probably look a bit superficial. Just try to focus on a few and, and show that you've done your research. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you so much, Dunya. Um, our next speaker is Ananya, who uh, did two summer internships, I believe, and is also one of our staff. Go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Uh, so hi everyone, it's pleasure meeting everyone here. My name is Ananya and I'm a U2 computer science and economics student and I'll be sharing my internship with you all. So this summer I interned with Bank of Montreal as junior business analyst and basically I've worked with technology and operations business support services. This might be a team you might not have even heard of, but yeah, this is one of the most important teams of the bank and this serves as the back backbone for all the teams. Um, I would like to say that I got this internship opportunity on my own, but the reputation and mention of McGill University and like my work experience at an early stage here, like arts internship office definitely helped me and uh, that I got shortlisted for interviews and my resume got shortlisted. Besides in that, I would like to say that I attended several career workshops. I went to CAPS. I connected with recruiters on LinkedIn and I asked them whether my resume is fit for your organization or not. Um, so my journey was not at what was not an easy one at all. Uh, it involved around 200 applications and only 14 interviews I faced. I know it's not just a number, but yeah, it's a hard one. Um, but it all began with connecting recruiters on LinkedIn and, you know, sending them cold emails and messages. And then one day I was lucky enough that I got an email back and they said, yes, we have a link and here are all the postings. So the moral of the story is uh, start applying early, like October. It's never late. And um, uh, like it's not a hard deadline, like you have to apply for 200 applications, but please keep a target like five applications per day if you start applying in October and then by the end of December it will be like 200 to 300 applications and see where you go and uh, don't be scared of interviews into uh, an interview cannot decide your future don't stress at all it's just an internship you're encouraged to do an internship but it's not like you know uh, that it's all your future also uh GPA is important, but it's not like everything depends on GPA. So what I would suggest is try to work on your extracurriculars and work experience because this is the only time. And at last, please don't stress at all. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ananya. Um, now, please, everyone, Michelle, did we skip you? Okay. <laughs> no okay. Worries. So Michelle is our last speaker for today. Go ahead, Michelle. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Jade. Um, so hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm Michelle. Um, I'm a U3 honors political science and communications student. Um, so this past spring and summer, I interned with the Center for International and Defense Policy. Um, that's a leading Canadian research organization that works to bridge the gap between um, academic research and policy prescription um, on matters related to international and defense um, 
sort of international military and defense. So the center works to produce research um, and it's communicated to and funded by Canada's Department of National Defense. Um, so to find my internship, similar to what other people have touched on, um, I started by compiling a list of various organizations that matched my fields of interest. So since I want to pursue a career in international humanitarian law and public policy, um, I looked for opportunities that would help me gain a broader understanding of how international economic policies and laws really influence the behavior and strategies of governments and multilateral bodies. So same timeline as Ananya, um, in December and early January, I sent out a lot of different emails to this list um, of organizations. So I stated my interests through resumes and cover letters. And I also customize those to fit each organization. So again, you can really prioritize, you know, don't have a huge list because then you won't have time to really, to really customize. But um, if your list is short enough, you can really make them personal to each organization. Um, and then after hearing back from the CIDP where I ended up working, um, I conducted a virtual interview with their CEO. And then um, I applied for funding to the AIO after I received the position. Um, so I was awarded um, money through the arts internship office. So I want to thank my donor for that as well. Um, so as an intern, my responsibilities really varied by week. Uh, my biggest projects were to produce two policy briefs for publication. So one was really on the efficacy and the consequences of economic sanctions against Russia by NATO countries. Um, and the other one was really talking about um, the implications of China's rising economic power through the digital economy and policies um, and actions of democratic states in response to that. On top of this, I was also responsible for attending um, various virtual meetings and roundtables in Montreal and drafting reports for the government on the issues that were being discussed by those um, policy experts. So since my internship was mostly remote and uh, based out of Kingston, I really only touched base with my supervisor about once or twice a week. Um, and that really required me to stay super organized and self-motivated. And also to keep track of questions that I needed to ask my supervisor um, to be able to complete my tasks. So this brings me to my first tip, which is don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, if you're unsure of what a task entails, or if even if you want to broaden your knowledge base um, on a certain issue that's being researched, it's always best to come up with a list of questions that you want to ask your employer, and then to schedule a time with them, um, whether it's on the phone or, or Zoom, so you have their full attention. Working alone, I found, could be really daunting, um, especially when you're thrown into new organizational settings over the summer. So Try to take some of the pressure off yourself by reaching out to those that are um, working with you, even if it's remote. Um, and if you find an area of work that you're really um, interested in, but you weren't assigned to work on, you can also reach out to your supervisor and ask if you can work on that task. Because for me, um, the organization was super diverse. So by articulating my interests in international power dynamics to my supervisor, I was able to focus my work um, with the center's network for strategic analysis and really kind of play to my interests. Um, if you're like me and you want to find your own internship for the summer, instead of applying directly to one through the AIO, um, my biggest tip would be get yourself organized early, which I know everyone has kind of talked about. Um, the summer does seem really far away, but being proactive in reaching out to organizations is really going to be key. Um, and even more important, like I already said earlier, is really setting yourself apart in your application. So this really does mean creating a distinct cover letter for each organization that you apply to, really researching the organization, um, showing them that you've done your research. So in your letter, you want to speak to the organization's specific mission, maybe some of the projects that they're working on, and connect those missions and those projects to your own passions and experiences. It's better to spend time, like I said, in a few applications and to create one generic cover letter that you're throwing around everywhere. So organizations want to see that you'll bring a unique energy, a perspective, and a skill set um, to, to their work. So I'll leave it there for now. But I, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions about my organization or I guess my experience more generally in the, in the breakout rooms. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Um, all right, so that was all our speakers for today. I will share my PowerPoint again. Um, so um, some of the people that you uh, heard today, so stick around if you wanna hear a bit more about the office and then we have the networking soon after. I won't talk for too long, I promise. Um, so we have our mentorship initiative. So some of our speakers tonight um, and more past interns have signed up to be mentors for this uh, mentorship initiative called AMI, one of our buzzwords. Um, and the deadline to apply as a mentee is October 16th. So you still have uh, about two weeks to sign up. Um, and what that brings is really like a one-on-one -on -one connection with uh, a former intern. Um, we put you in touch uh, between that person. It's a randomized uh, selection uh, pairing. And um, then you're put in touch and they're here to answer any of your questions uh, when it comes to your internship search. And we're also gonna have some events, uh, some meet and greets, some pizza lunch. 
Um, the first one is on November 3rd, and there's going to be more also in the winter semester. Those are also open to everyone. So if you don't sign up to be a mentee, but you still want to come and meet our mentors, uh, there will be opportunities. So again, um, keep in touch to see um, the AMI events coming up. And all the links are on our website. Again, everything will be shared um, at the end, and I'll put some links in the chat as well. So you already met two of our staff. Um, and I want to highlight as well that even if you don't sign up for a mentor, if you sign up for it, and there's a limited amount of uh, spots as well for AMI this year. Um, so if you don't get paired with the mentor, uh, don't worry. You can also come to our drop-in hours and meet our staff. Um, they're all past interns and have all a lot of uh, tips as you heard tonight and more to help you in your individual uh, search. Um, so John, you can introduce yourself if you want. Uh, you, you heard from the other girls, so I'll let John introduce himself. Yeah, of course. Thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Ioannis or John. Um, I'm a U3, um, double majoring in political science and history. Uh, once again, I couldn't say it better myself. All the past interns and in the students before have me fully covered. Uh, as they said, plan ahead, uh, be ready, start preparing, start seeing through the different uh, organizations and try searching which one would be fitting to your, not only your knowledge now, but also your prospect and your future goals in your academic or professional career. And my only, my only advice, which I would like to keep very concise, and I'm not in any way at all biased because I'm working at the office. The only thing I would tell you is that you don't really understand the value and the, the priceless resources that the office provides unless you go at the dropping hours or unless you go into the website and read some of the past interns reports unless you go and check out the flyers or check out the resources that we have and we provide in accordance with the CAPS uh, career planning uh, department. That's my advice for you. At, at the beginning, it might feel uh, too good to be true, but the guidance is there. And if you have discipline, perseverance, and the drive to do something important for your academic career. We are here to help you and we'll be very glad to do that. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, as um, he said, drop in hours. Also, I just want to mention we have Muskan and Carly who are not here tonight because they're in class, but that are also here to give you all uh, the advising. Uh, so we have in-person drop-in hours. So we're located in Leacock in room 307 and 308. And uh, we have hours every day. Again, we'll share the website. Uh, maybe Michelle, if you can set, uh, just share our, the link of our website in the chats right now so people can already check it out. Um, yeah, and we have a wide variety of uh, hours uh, every day for drop-in. So you just have to literally drop in, walk in through the door and come talk to us. Uh, and as everyone said, we have lots of resources and we can give you one-on-one -on -one advising to guide you through your search. And uh, we also have appointments uh, if you want to do it virtually. So that's also an option, again, all on the website. We also have a lot of other events planned uh, through the semester and through the year. So these are all the fall semester events. Uh, we have two events for ARIA. So if you're interested in research, I would encourage you to check them out. So um, October 18, we have the poster event in person where you can hear about people's research uh, from this summer. And then if you want to learn about uh, how to apply for next year, uh, we have an info session, a virtual info session in November. Um, if you want just general information about the office, um, like info, info session about how to apply to internships, um, we have one on October 21st. And as I mentioned, the meet and greet, the pizza lunch uh, will be happening in November and it's open to all. So you can also network with some more past interns during that event. We also have workshops. So as I said, it's internships, awards, and training. So there's a lot of training offered before, during, and after your internship. Uh, so in the before part, as a lot of speakers mentioned as well, uh, the CV and cover letter are a really important part. So 
uh, we partner with CAPS, the Career Advising Planning Services. And we have CV, cov letter, and coffee with advisor events uh, all in the same week on October 25. So again, put all those dates in your agendas. Um, you can find them all. Again, this is what our website looks like. And on the events page, you can find all the details, all the links to register if it's online, or all the details if it's in person. And some commonly asked questions. So we didn't have many questions in the chat today, but I know a lot of people ask, is it possible to apply as a U0 or a U1, uh, or should I wait? Um, the quick answer, again, come talk to us and then we'll find out what opportunities are available for you. But the quick answer is that yes, uh, it's not too early to start. Obviously it depends on uh, where you're looking for and you have to you know, manage your expectation for a student. You might not get UNHCR straight away, um, but who knows if your profile really fits the position as sadly was also saying, like if you have all the qualities for that position, you really have a chance. And again, you can look on our website to see um, like some U0 and U1 students have done internships. Um, can I pursue an internship outside of Canada? Yes, uh, there are some mandatory trainings to do at McGill to keep in mind. So um, the travel registry and pre-departure, again, some, some keywords to, to stick around in your brain if you're going to do an internship abroad. Um, and obviously it comes with a lot of research uh, on your end as well um, to do an internship outside of Canada. Um, and can I pursue an internship that is not directly related to my major? Again, we talk about that more during our info session or um, during advising, but yes, you can. Uh, again, internship can be an opportunity for you to explore a field that is not related to your major and just to try something new. Um, or again, it's all about learning and trying during summer internships. And for research-oriented internships, uh, so our main program would be the ARIA program, which is more targeted for like preparing for masters and for people who already have a bit more uh, research experience. But we also have some internship postings that are more targeted towards research. So once again, come talk to us and we'll guide you towards which ones are um, more focused on research, if that's what you're interested in. And yeah, so the timeline, again, a lot of people talked about when to get started. Uh, so we kind of break it down. This is also available uh, on our posters and on the website. Um, so again, September is really the time you've already done the first step to getting to know us. So this is, you're on the right track. Um, and then as people mentioned, October, December is a good time to find your summer internship, do your research so that you're not overwhelmed last minute. And then again, we have lots of workshops and resources to help you prepare your applications. It's good to get started early because you think summer is far away, but the end of the, the semester, winter semester is April. So things move quickly on our end as well. Um, and then again, we're here to guide you even during your internship and after your internship. So it's important to keep in touch with us. Um, so I put a little slide of key dates. Again, we'll be sharing those slides. So in case you just need a little summary, if that was too many information, I put some very important key dates uh, to, to remember. Um, so postings, we didn't really explain what they are, but it's our internship opportunities. Um, if you check on the website, you'll see the summer 2020 uh, PDFs and opportunities, but uh, we'll be updating them mid-January. So applications open mid-January for those opportunities, uh, but you can already check everything out on our website and they will most likely be coming back in the next summer. So it's already good. Once again, come talk to us and we'll tell you exactly, um, explain all this in more detail. Um, and all the deadlines, so for the postings in ARIA are in mid to late February. And then for awards and funding uh, would be in March. So again, I'm just putting this out there, come to info sessions to get all the details. And yeah, stay connected again, uh, repeating myself, but we have drop-in every day, one-on-one -on -one advising, also online advising, and we're in Leacock on the third floor. And we're finally at the breakout rooms. Uh, so for some networking, um, this is, I've also, sorry, I skipped through this, but thank you again to our speakers and uh, our staff and our donors and professors and everyone that it takes. It's not just our team uh, to get through all these internships. So I just want to take a moment and to you all students, obviously, you are the center of this office. Um, and again, students giving back to other generations of students, that's really like what makes the office so great. Um, so thank you again. And on that, I will say that now we can have some networking. So we're gonna do breakout rooms. Uh, there's the names of the speakers 